Now let's talk about calculating work in a cyclic process. Here we have a cyclic process. Look at this pressure versus volume graph. Now in this cyclic process, suppose we start from A. From A we go to B keeping the volume constant and then from B we go to C keeping pressure constant from C to B go to D keep again keeping volume constant and again from D to A keeping pressure constant. Now we start from A and we cyclically reach to A. So this is a cyclic process and we are interested to calculate work in this process. So one way uh, is to calculate work part by part. Suppose we I calculate the work from A to B and then I calculate from B to C then from C to D and then from D to A and I added them up because work is a scalar quantity we can calculate it and uh, part by part and then we can add it there's no problem and this is absolutely legitimate we can do this if we, if we indeed do this if we calculate work from A to B then A to B uh, in the process from A to B the volume remains constant so this is an isochoric process and if volume remains constant work done will be zero so the work done in the process A to B will be zero right from B to C if we calculate work this is isochoric process the work done is integral minus PDV we already know this and uh, if pressure is constant we can bring pressure out of the integral and we just have to integrate volume and the integral of dv is delta v that's final volume minus initial volume that is 4 liter and the pressure here is 8 so that will be 32 liter atmosphere we also have to take into account the sign convention as per our convention if the work is done by the system the work is taken as negative because the energy of the system will decrease if system does work and uh, here volume is increasing whenever the volume is increasing of our system and you have to remember what our system is our system is a cylinder having massless piston and inside which we have an idle gas so if the volume of system is increasing that means that massless piston is going up and that is going up when our my idle gas is pushing it up and that means my idle gas is doing work and it will do work at its own cost uh, uh, that means the internal energy of my idle gas will decrease and as per our convention if the energy is decreasing then that thing has to be taken as negative so the work from B to C will be negative because the volume is increasing again from C to D if we go then from C to D the work will again come as zero the work would come as zero because the volume is remaining constant so integral of PDV will be zero as DV is zero as we have seen it before now uh, when you come down from D to A then again the change in volume is same as we had from B to C but the pressure this time is 2 atmosphere so the work done will be pressure into change in volume change in volume is 4 liter and the pressure is 2 that will amount to 8 liter atmosphere and if you look to the sign then the volume is decreasing on going from D to A my volume is decreasing that means work is be being done on my system and if his work is being done on my system that will increase the energy of my system and as per our sign convention the work has to be taken as positive so we have kept it as plus 8 liter atmosphere if we add all the work that will amount to minus 24 liter atmosphere the thing you have to note is the net work done is negative that means system has done work in part of the process work was done on the system in part of the process work was done by the system overall my system has done work that means when I complete the process I started from A and I came back again to A in that case I have done some amount of work so my internal energy uh, uh, th that means uh, 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 my internal energy was ought to decrease because I am doing some work but the thing you have to understand here is this is a cyclic process in cyclic process all the attributes of the system all the state variables of the system is restored back that means the internal energy of the system whatever it was before it will be the same as after reaching to the state A once again but I have done some work I have spent some energy that means w during this process system will absorb some amount of energy some amount of heat from the process and from that heat it will do some work look there are only two ways in which energy exchange is possible system is doing work 
that means system has to spend some energy but system is coming back to the state a system is coming back to this state a and when it is coming back to this state a the energy of the system has to be the same as it was before but it has spent some energy because it has done some work that means it has to acquire some energy from the system and the other way of acquiring energy is heat so in this process system will gain some heat and the energy that it will gain from heat it will spend in doing work that's how it will retain its energy same as before and it will still do some work this is a, a slight glimpse of what will happen and um, we will see this in greater detail as the course will proceed now you could have got this 24 this numerical value 24 is also if you look into the area of this rectangular rectangle um, the the length of AB is 6 and the length of BC is uh, 4 and if you find the area of this rectangular loop the area is 24 now something must click to you that uh, uh, this this area has something to do with the calculation of work and indeed has many things to do with calculation of work if we just calculate this area of closed rectangular loop that will give me the numerical value of work and for the sign I have to look uh, but the numerical value of this loop is 24 and uh, the way we have calculated work calculating work part by part for different process and then adding it that has given us minus 24 liter atmosphere uh, this I would have got straight away if I would have calculated the area of the loop the area of the loop the area the area of this loop is 24 the unit uh, will be liter atmosphere now when you have a graph between y and x like this and when you are doing integral y dx what actually you do is uh, you you keep this y constant you keep this y constant for a small variation of x so so you keep this suppose this is a value of y you are keeping it constant for a very small variation of x suppose this this is a very small variation of x this is dx so for this small x the variation of y is negligible so i can approximate this as a rectangle so this is a rectangle when i do y dx y is the length of the rectangle the vertical vertical length and this horizontal part is dx so when I integrate y dx I mean you you take y to be constant for a very small variation in x you multiply y by dx next what you do after after variation in y you go to some other place and for this whole rectangular strip y can be considered as constant the breadth of this rectangular will again be dx and this height will be a next y after you vary x the y will be continuously varying and after you vary x you will have a different y but for a small variation of x for the length dx you can consider y to be almost constant although although this will be increasing like if, if you take two point now you you will have an increase in the length of the curve but if you take very infinite in very 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 small length in x very small variation in x then y can be approximated to be constant y can be assumed to be constant for a very small variation in x so what what technically is happening is you are adding the area of these thin rectangular strips and that's what integration is and uh, so uh, if you have studied area under the curve uh, already then you must be knowing that uh, whenever you integrate a function from two point suppose this is a orbit function you are integrating it from x1 to x2 so what it will give is it will give you all the area of 10 rectangular strips from x1 to x2 and when you add all of these technically it becomes the area of this curve between x1 and x2 suppose this is a point x2 then it will give the area under the curve from x1 to x2 so integral integration of a function is nothing but the area on, under the curve of that function taken as on the y axis and variation of x taken on the x axis now this 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 you must understand now after having been understood this we know that work is integral pdv now this is similar to integral y dx so if work is integral pdv and if i have a 
P versus V graph, I have a pressure versus volume curve, then the area under that curve should give me work because work is integral PDV and integral PDV integral PDV is work and integral PDV is the area under the pressure volume curve as we have seen here. So, so when you go from A to B, there is no area under the curve because the line is completely vertical. Work done is zero. When we go from B to C, the area under the curve is completely, suppose this is the point B and this is the point C. The area under the curve is all the area below that curve until X axis because we are varying, varying X on this on this axis and this the breadth of the rectangular strip is on the axis and the whole part is the length. So this rectangular strip every time we are taking the rectangular strip so the breadth has to lie on the x axis. So it will cover the whole of the area below that curve up till x axis. So the area under the curve BC is this. This is the net area under the curve. And then uh, when you go from C to D when you go from C to D Again, the area under the curve is zero because no, no. If we assume that line to be very thin, there is no area below that curve. So the work done from C to D will be zero, and uh, we have already seen the work will be zero with another explanation because volume is remaining constant. And if we look to the area, then the area below the CD curve is zero. So the work has to be zero in this process. If we go further from D to E, the area under the curve in this process will be this the area below AD curve below AD that is this area the area below AD is this area now this is the area that lies below DA so this is the amount of work that is being done in the process D to A now from B to C volume is increasing that means work is done by the system so this work will be taken as negative so this large area between BC curve is taken as negative and the small area the small area between DA curve is positive because volume is decreasing when volume is decreasing volume is decreasing then work is being done on the gas and this area is taken as positive so when you add these two what will happen when you add these two this part is negative. So the work done from the process B to C is negative. The work done from D to A is positive. So when you add these two, what will happen is this 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 strip. The work done is from D to A. This is positive. This part will be cancelled because this negative and this positive will cancel each other. So the amount of work that will be left is this much. And this much technically is the area under the loop. So that's why area under the loop gives us the work. Now the sign convention would be if the loop in the loop the direction of the process is clockwise then the work will be negative as is the case here and if it is anti-clockwise then the work will be positive and this you can intuitively feel if it is clockwise then the in the upper portion it will be from left to right so that means in the upper portion the volume will be increasing and in the upper portion the area under the curve is greater that means in the upper portion you will have more negative work so if the volume is increasing that means you will have no more negative work and the positive work is done on the lower portion when the volume is decreasing and in the lower portion you will have less area under the curve so the positive work will be lesser and the negative work will be greater so the net amount of work will be negative if the loop is clockwise and if it is anti-clockwise it will be vice versa the work will be positive